I don't see how carrying the dread in the country is a problem. Let me tell you something. Where you have your property is where your mind is. We're in a situation where if we must be sincere with ourselves, you only talk in terms of evolution when you have time for things to evolve and then imagine its natural order. Nigeria never evolved. It was always lumped together. So when you're talking evolution in relation to that kind of entity, it's a waste of time. If you're not talking devolution in a state that is meant to be federal, then it simply means that you have a problem somewhere. Devolution means that you're handing power from the top to the... You're handing power from top to down. But that would be a lie. This was not the way this country was founded. It was founded on federalist principles, which meant that the parts had the power, and then they gave power to the central. So it wasn't the central giving power to the lower levels of governance. It was the lower levels coming together, forming the central, and giving it power. So neither are applicable to Nigeria. If we truly desire change in Nigeria, positive change, if we want anything to change, things to move, then we would have to be speaking in terms of a revolution. When people hear the word revolution, more often than not, there is this care buzz that comes up immediately. Revolution to them almost always means violence, guns, wars, but it's not. It simply means a turnaround. Anything that, anything that turns the situation in Nigeria today around would be a revolution. So in reality, we are in a situation where if anything must change in Nigeria, we must be hopeful that we would have a peaceful revolution in Nigeria that would lead to meaningful change as far as Nigeria is concerned. But evolution, devolution, those are just slogans in the Nigerian contest. They can't make any sense. Thank you. Well, well what I think is that uh, we need to be talking about growth without development because that's what's part happening in Nigeria. You know, we have people growing up, you know, like you have a child growing up, but necessarily not developing, you know. Now, we shouldn't be talking about discuss like that. We have a situation in Nigeria where we have the elitists, uh, you know, a situation where we have like maggots from the dustbin. You know, these maggots actually emanate from the dustbin. Now, the good thing for people like us is that uh, when push comes to shop, now this whole thing is going to get to the maggots, you get me, first. That's real good like that. But truth be told, uh, what we actually need in Nigeria, we need intellectual insurgency. You get people who can talk to people's brains, people who can tell you to the face and ask you why you are Christian, who can ask you why you are Muslim, do you actually know why you are this kind of people? We need to change this mindset, you understand? That's what we're talking about here. And that is what we, I, I think we need to be discussing in Nigeria as Africans. We, we don't have any other thing to do. We need to know who we are. We can keep pretending to be something else. You understand me? It's not going to work out that way. So I think we're in a very serious situation. We're growing up without developing, which is taking us nowhere. You know what? Like a vicious circle. They're always going to come back to us. That's what I got to say. Okay, what I think um, has been, what I've listened to today, um, I guess you're talking about the fellow debates that has um, just um, finished, um, is that both devolution and evolution, these two things are paradoxical to the Nigerian system today. The system we run is such that it takes away even the good people from even debating any of these issues. The good people have been shut out of governance. The good people have been shut out of even governments. To, so that the, the, the people do not even understand that they themselves constitute the government. You see? And so, but I've seen a lot of politically correct statements here today. Um, everyone is saying the same thing. We are pointing towards a particular thing, but people are just, there are two things happening here. One, the courage to state what exactly is the solution. Many persons are lacking in that courage. And the other, the second thing is that the rigorous exercise in organizing towards the solution, a lot of persons are shying away from it. The solution is a revolution. If you talk about devolution of powers, devolution of powers in which system? Under this kind of system, you're talking about trashing the constitution. The clog in the will of the solution is inside the constitution itself, which is that you, the constitution does not allow for a referendum for a new constitution itself. So what we have to do is we just need to shut down this whole system 
that is giving rise to all fruits of corruption, tyranny, wickedness, maladministration. And we just need to shut it down. And how do we go about it? It is by educating the people. You see, we must leave this era wherein we are, we are, we are talking above the heads of the people. Talk, because this whole event would end up like any other talk show if we do not point, bring out actionable points, which is how do we organize people? Locally, how do we organize them? You know, um, statewide, how do we organize them nationwide? In fact, internationally, because what we need is solidarity among the oppressed people. Solidarity, when that is fixed, we can sort any other problem. But if you do not have that in place, and I would, I would make um, allusion to what happened during NSAS. You see, NSAS was an event in recent times that was trying to, where the Nigerian person was trying to assert lead, um, citizenship. You've always been saying, I'm a citizen of Nigeria. You know, we are the leaders of tomorrow. So the citizen, quote and unquote, is trying to say, okay, let me even test, like lawyers would say, let me test the citizenship on the streets. But what happened? We all we understand all, what happened during answers. People, you know, I, I do not understand how a government, nowhere in the world will a government carry a gun, load it with bullets, and face citizens. You don't shoot citizens, you don't go after citizens, you go after slaves. You go after slaves. And so the Nigerian state, the Nigerian ruling class, has not, does not see any of us in the lower class. They don't see any of us as citizens. There are no citizens yet in Nigeria. What we run here is like a slave master and slave relationship. So until we make people start, you know, see all this, because there is a misconception, a misunderstanding of all these things. You talk about devolution, you talk about evolution, you talk about constitution. You are saying all these things with the presumption that you are a citizen. You are not a citizen in the eyes of the ruling class. So until we, we understand these simple, simple facts, bring them together, organize people politically to take over power, we will just keep having one celebration, we'll have another celebration, the likes of Femi Falano will come again in another celebration to tell us what he said here today again. He will say it next year, in 2023, by 2023, would vote for well, you know, one of the um, two sides of an evil coin, APC or PDP, would we we repeat, repeat the same ritual. And for those who are saying we should boycott the election, <laughs> that you, be, you, you, you are just helping the ruling class. Because they don't even want an election. They don't want you to come out during the election. What happened in Lagos was, an, was a boycott in itself. The uh, local government election was a boycott by the people. The people said, we are, we are not participating in this. But they came up with results. Now, today, we have local government chairman already. So, if you say you are boycotting the election, you are helping them. If you say you are, uh, um, you are floating another political party so that you can join in the 2003 election, yes, in fact, you are validating the whole fraud in itself. So, the way out is a revolution. It's a revolution and it's a revolution. Else, we will keep psychomambulating the same problems. We will come back again next year and we will debate the same thing. Thank you. Well, the summary of what everyone said today, all of the speakers, uh, it can be best to summarize as everybody is in need of a revolution. The demand to end 1999 constitution is a revolutionary demand because you cannot end 1999 constitution without actually, without actually, without a major shutdown in the country. So even the question of devolution of power. Of course, there is a question of devolution of power to whom? But the question is, the, 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 these various state governors or state actors or federal characters or federal persons who are advocating for devolution of power is also a, a reflection of inter-class war on which of the ruling class, which section of the ruling class is going to continue to exploit the Nigerian people. But for us, for the average Nigerian people who have been deprived of education, else who are poverty stricken, who can no longer who are no longer safe in their houses, they only need one thing. And it's a revolution to put a permanent end to the culture of impunity, to poverty, to terrorism, to insecurity and total lack of citizenship. Um, personally for me, I feel we need a radical change. Yeah. Uh, this system is suffocating, is 
this uh, system has produced several um, are taking Nigeria backward. We're not even moving out forward. Because look, if you look at the narrative around there, we're still talking about Flani Esme, we're talking about grazing roots in this modern era. So what, what that tells you is that something's wrong with the system we are running at the moment. Yeah, and we need to do away with it. And the first step is we need to take away the 1999 constitution. Yeah, we've, have, uh, we've had um, five uh, alterations so far now. With the um, recent um, public clearing held in May for the constitutional amendment, that was around 20, uh, 16th of uh, May precisely. So the exercise also, we don't know what the uh, the national assembly will bring bring back to Nigerians and tell us that okay, we we'll carried out another amendment. Okay, and from the memo memoranda submitted by interest group, pressure group, all around, across the country. Okay, this is what we, we are arrived at. So, but the issue we are saying that is that the constitution should be jettisoned totally. There's no point of um, um, rewriting, editing, yeah, erasing any part of it. We want a people's constitution. Let's sit down. Let's agree on the terms of our union. So on what basis on fairness, equity, and justice. I think that is that's the way forward now, and the only way forward is re revolution, a radical change. Because this system is suffocating, as I said earlier on. We can't make any um, progressive uh, progress with this constitution. No matter how long, how many times we edit it, are you getting it? So that is the way forward. Revolution now is the way forward. So uh, we just have to speak to Nigerians. Yeah, fine, okay, elections are holding a few years from now now. But who are we voting on that which system? Because anyone coming in also is, is coming in to come and protect his interest. And his interest lies with this yeah. system. Yeah. So he can, so the political way to obtain this system so is lacking because he's a product of this system. So he can't even, he can't make any, we can't make any significant okay. progress with this yeah, okay. constitution, with this system of government. It's easy to destroy, but it's hard to build. Uh, Sheon said, and I quote him now, that um, words carry more action than war. So with words, you can negotiate. With war, you might not actually get to the point of negotiation. Because the party can even die during the war. So, I think it is high time we kept on engaging people, telling them what we think is right. See, there's no nation that you have it one way. And if you want to respect human rights, some people have the right to say yes, and some actually have the right to say no. So conversing majority to say yes on your side has to do with talking and engagement. So for me, I think the dialogue has to continue. And it won't change overnight. Like I mentioned in one of my uh, when I contributed. If you are an entertainer, show what or, or express yourself with your heart. Show people that beyond just dancing, this is where we should be going. Beyond just laughing, this is what I think about something. So from constant engagement from constant uh, dialogue, then we can get to the promise. That's all I have to say.